In this video, we're going to go over the basics of using the Film and Final Designs of software. Once the program is installed, simply double click on the icon and open the program. And once the program is opened, on the left side you'll see your toolbar, and right above it, your menu, and above your menu, additional tools and applications. Alongside the right side is your control center where you can access additional features and tools and actually uh, some of the similar tools as on your toolbar as well. Once the program is open and you want to look up patterns, simply go to the top left corner where it says open pattern from the database. Click that button. And once the database access tool is opened, you'll have uh, two different ways to view your patterns assuming you have tint and paint protection. We have two menus, the tree menu and the drop down menu. The tree menu holds the tint patterns and the drop down menu holds the paint protection patterns. And you can actually set the filters to either or depending on your preferences, but we just have them set for the tree menu with tint and the paint, paint protection on the drop down. For paint protection, B stands for bumper, H is for hood, T is for lights, and U represents or stands for other, which represents the roof, A pillars, the splash guards, and the rockers and such. For the tree menu on the tent, we have short and long patterns, and the difference between short and long is the length of the pattern at the bottom edge of the gasket. The short patterns, for example, the front doors go to the bottom edge of the gasket, while long patterns, they go three-eighths of an inch below the bottom edge of the gasket for the front roll-ups and the rear roll-ups, only for the roll-ups of all vehicles. The short patterns go right to the bottom edge of the gasket and the long patterns go three-eighths of an inch below the bottom gasket. So let's say we want to look up a pattern. I'm going to go ahead and choose a Chevy Camaro. Where is it? Two-door convertible 2015. So I want to open up the pattern. I'll sil simply double click on the kit that I want, hit OK, and the pattern opens up in the workspace. Now there's two different views to look at the, the patterns. It, this is line mode and this is solid mode. To be able to select the pattern that you want to cut, just simply click on it in solid mode. But in line mode, you actually have to click on the line itself, otherwise you're not going to select it. So this is actually selecting the pattern when you click on the line. Now uh, a good rule of thumb to use whenever you're getting ready to cut a pattern is to go here to the cut preview which allows you to preview the pattern before you actually cut it. Similar to like a print preview, this is the cut preview. So whatever you see in this cut preview is what is going to cut once you actually cut it. Now to cut it is to simply hit this quick cut button. Once you've hit the quick cut button, this will automatically send the job to the plotter. There's no stopping, no rewinding, no hesitation. Once you hit this quick cut button, it's going to send it straight to the cutter and quickly cut it. The other option is to use this cut button right here, which gives you some additional options to choose from before you actually hit the cut button. This is going to allow you to set some different settings for like the plotter if you decide to, for example, if you wanted to before you actually hit the cut button, but if not, if you are ready to go, just simply select the, the pattern or patterns you want and hit the cut button and then it'll automatically send the job to the plotter. And we can click back on the arrow to go back to the workspace. You can also click and drag objects if you want to. If you notice I've got this object clicked, if I click it again, it'll bring up some arrows around the black dots which allows me to rotate it. And these side buttons right here will allow me to skew the object a little bit if I wanted to, which is probably a primary use if you're doing some kind of logo or text or image or something like that, but for patterns you probably more than likely will never use that <laughs> feature for patterns. So if I wanted to I can go back here to the undo and simply undo all those actions that I just did. I don't want to do that. And just a really quick rundown of the toolbar on the left side here, what you can do, the, the arrow is 
a tool that allows you to select your selection tool and if you click it again on the object it'll allow you to rotate and skew as I showed before but if you double click pretty fast on the, the line it'll change the object into uh, a node form which allows you to manipulate the nodes and lines however you choose and please and again this is probably a function you'd probably use more so for graphics or images or text or that kind of thing and you'd probably rarely use it for for tint it just depends I'm gonna go ahead and undo all my actions here and this is the ruler tool if you click the ruler it'll give you a measurement diagonal horizontal or vertical just wherever you stretch the the ruler to it'll give you a measurement now the measurement is actually located on the bottom of the screen towards right above your taskbar if you can see those numbers that are moving as I'm rotating and, and moving this ruler line you can see those numbers moving this is a measuring tool but once you let go it, it pretty much resets and disappears so if you want to use it you gotta be kinda quick to look at what you're looking at before you let go of the the mouse or otherwise it'll it'll disappear and you have to remeasure again so again this is a, a little pretty neat tool it allows you to measure uh, from one point to another point and once you let go like I said it, it disappears and resets this tool right here is the resize tool now this is a pretty neat tool because it allows you to resize your object to uh, certain points that you set it to as far as height length or width and the crosshairs here the vertical and the horizontal are similar to like boundaries that you set for the object for example if you want to raise this rear glass up a little bit I'm gonna raise this crosshair upwards because I just want to affect this part of the pattern and not anywhere else and just simply hit that up arrow and as I'm hitting the up arrow you'll notice how the pattern is being modified and click enter and the action is applied now if I wanted to adjust or modify the right side of the pattern I'll uh, drag the crosshair to the right side and again I'll hit the right arrow if you notice the pattern is being adjusted and modified it's increasing to the right as I'm hitting the right arrow I'll simply hit enter and it applies the action now the way you can adjust those increments or adjust those measurements is to go to the edit preference and the keyboard and in here is where your measurements are set so every time I was hitting that arrow it was moving 0.125 of an inch that's considered normal if I held down the control button while I while I was hitting the arrow it would move 0.375 eighths or 0.375 of an inch if I was holding down shift it would move 0.039 of an inch and as you can see you get the idea you can set these measurements accordingly as you want and then hit apply and OK I'm just gonna leave mine the same but that's how much these lines were moving every time I hit the the up arrow it was 0.125 of an inch and to the right 0.125 of an inch so that gives you an idea of how to use the resize tool because some of the patterns you might think oh, I just I just need maybe like a hair tad on the back end of this of this door you could adjust the pattern using the resize tool and as we move further down the toolbar this icon right here with the it looks like an arrow or a, the, the triangle with the line and the dot if I click that once I click on an object it'll turn it into a, a node mode node form with all the nodes and the color changes into red and now you are able to edit this pattern and move the nodes and the lines and manipulate them as well and, and again this is probably something you would use more frequently with probably an image or logo or something like that but when you're working with tint patterns you, you may may not use this as, as much as you might think so let me go ahead and undo those when you're editing in node mode these icons here to the right are different types of applications or settings that you could use to, uh, to achieve certain results for example when you're in node mode this I can I can double click on the line and add more nodes if I wanted to convert 
all these nodes into a curve which red represents it's curved I can select all the nodes here I have to select at least four nodes in order to make, turn uh, segments into curves I have to select at least four but as you can see I selected way more than four but since I've got all those selected in a row I can hit this button right here interpolate a single curve and this will apply and, and make it a a single curve if I wanted to make it into a straight line I could simply hit convert to segment node and it turns it into a, a straight line and which turns it into blue as you can see if I wanted to do that with this line I could do that as well turn it to straight if I wanted to do it to all these lines I could select all those nodes and and hit that as well but anyhow as you can see this these are different applications or different types of uh, applications for editing lines in the node mode and if I go over here I click on the T for text and click into the workspace I can start typing and similar to like a word document you have certain options you can change the font scroll down and you can choose what font you want and depending on the font you have the option to choose regular some of them you might have bold or bold italic option this is where you can change the size and you can change the different positioning right here and here you have some generic shapes to work with if you choose to go the graphic or the logo or image route to create some kind of uh, logo maybe and right here you have your tracing tools this bitmapping tracing tool allows you to to click on a JPEG image and basically convert it into a vector image so this basically vectorizes an image so I've got a JPEG opened up I'm gonna click on the bitmap tracing and, and click inside the gray area as you notice it traced the the gray area and made it into made it into a node mode where I can actually clean and edit the lines if I hit the the, the the arrow selection tool and click and drag the object outward into the workspace you can see how it cleaned it and it made, made, it, made it a vectorized image and if I double click it again you can see it changed it back to node mode and you can go in and manipulate the lines if you wanted to for example maybe I want to make this a little bit more rounded or something like that but as you get the idea you can go through and clean images that way the point digitizing tool is a tool that allows you to, to trace but it traces it with straight lines segments that once you finish tracing the object or the image whatever you have I'll just for sake of time and example purposes go ahead and just quickly go around this object I, I click back on the node I started off with to connect them together so that way it's a solid object now it's complete I connected the nodes and uh, that's just another way for you to use the the tracing tool as far as the point digitation tool and you can go in and click on this button right here the arrow with the the point and the line in it and click back on the line to bring back the editing possibilities and start editing the nodes if I want to make that a curve again you need at least four nodes selected I have five here so that's enough and I can convert it to a circle there we go select that and convert it to a circle right here to make that rounded a little bit more probably drag this down drag that down a little bit more and as you can see I'm cleaning the pattern and just dragging the crosshairs and manipulating the line to fit the shape of the form that I want and, uh, as you can see this is probably going to take some time but ju it just gives you an example of what you can do and how to clean a pattern using the tracing tool and the last part right here the last tracing tool let me move this out of the way is the the freehand tracing tool which you can simply freehand draw similar to like a pencil or a pen you can pretty much trace over an object and of course this is a very bad example I'm just for sake of example just to show you and when you get ready to connect the nodes at the end you can click back on this arrow right here and click and drag the node on top of each other and it automatically connects 
so that's how you use the tracing tool and right here is the outline tool for example and you can use this for text or for objects but once you click it for example let me just type in a letter type in a T T let me make this a little bit larger let me zoom in a little bit what I want to do is an outline so once I clicked on the object which is a T I clicked on outline I can do an inner or an outer outline I just want to do an outer outline so I uncheck the inner and it's going to give me an outline that is about point zero three ninths of an inch I hit apply and it made the outline and now what I can do is simply drag these arrows out a little bit more if I want it a little bit bigger or smaller and that you can adjust it that way this is going to do the inner line as you notice the, in the inner line if you wanted an inner line this is how you would adjust it but again you can do that over here so I uncheck that so that's how you do an outline or an inline and with this that's a drop shadow so once again you have your object selected and you hit drop shadow and this allows you to, to add a drop shadow to your object to your image simply drag it wherever I want it and hit apply check off of that and this is a 3d drop shadow basically so you can click that and you can change the angle there you go you can change the angle of this 3d filter this 3d effect that you want if you wanted to use the cut tool make sure the object is selected it's important because it's not going to cut unless only the object selected so if I want this T cut I need to have it selected and then I click the cut tool and I just simply cut through it and it cuts through it wherever I want wherever I have the the cut uh, cut through it cuts through it and now I can separate it so that's the cut tool if I undid that kept it back together if I wanted to multiply the an object or objects I hit the multiply tool and what this does see I need to have it selected let me select it there we go now as you notice it added some multiple some multiple objects to it and I can multiply the rows zoom out a little bit more so you can see multiply the rows or multiply the columns as well and hit apply when I'm ready and these measurements in here allow me to it's hard to see but these measurements will determine the spacing between the, the objects so you can kinda see you get a little bit closer you can tell better but that's what those basically determined and you get the idea as you play with it but this was just a really quick rundown of the toolbar on the left hand side of uh, what you can do and this is for a print preview with your connect with your printer this is just a, an additional copy of the arrow selection tool and this is the print preview I mean the, the cut preview I'm sorry before you cut something you can go to the cut preview and and cut it from the cut it from there but this is just cut preview and this is your cut button this is your quick cut button